Welcome to Doc Martin's quarantine video series. Early on in this series, I got a message from one of my patients encouraging me to do something on immunity. Tess was confident that it would be useful for people to have good information pieced together well during these critical times. So Tess, thank you for the feedback. I listen. This video and the following will be on optimizing immunity during these infectious times. Since ECQ will be coming to an end soon, this doesn't actually mean that the virus is gone. We must remain vigilant. The new normal will require us to behave very differently. I wanted to share with you some of my ideas around this. But first, please note, I am not in any way claiming to be an expert on coronavirus or immunity. The whole world is just starting to figure it out because precisely it is a new virus. I am not a medical doctor, nor am I an infectious disease expert. I am simply sharing with you basic science, knowledge, information, and research which may possibly play a role in optimizing your immune system. Everything I say will be supported by studies and reference. Remember, your household is only as safe as its weakest link. So please make sure that everyone, including your children, your partner, your household health, understands the importance of these policies. Let's get cracking! A lot has been said and read during this period about our immune system, so I wanted to first explain in very general terms how our immune system works, how it reacts to a virus, bacteria, parasite, or really anything that's foreign to our bodies. You have two parts of your immune system, the innate and the adaptive. Think of the innate system as your first generalized response to a virus, bacteria, or parasite, anything that's foreign in your body. Your adaptive immune system is more specific. However, it takes several days for your body to mount an immune response. For your information, this is what those antibody tests you read about are measuring. So if you look at this graph which was just published in May of 2020 by Yanuk et al. in the Journal of Integrative Medicine. If you'll notice the light orange color is your viral load, the yellow is your immune response, and the dark orange is actually the expression of the disease or the symptoms. A properly timed immune response is critical in achieving resiliency to the disease. You'll notice from this chart that when there is a delayed immune response, the viral load is higher. That is because once the virus enters your body, it mutates and becomes very aggressive and uses your own genetic material to replicate and spread. Basically, the virus is constant and global. Initial studies have suggested that the coronavirus mutates much slower than the seasonal flu, which makes it hopeful that a vaccine against it can be developed. However, that is at best at least a year or two away. It is infectious. Current research says that one person will infect 2 to 2.5 people, which gives rise to the doubling rate or that number that you see in reports. This is an indicator of how well a country is handling the global pandemic. There are some reports that say it can be transmitted even prior to symptoms showing. But the WHO says, and I will quote for clarity, at present, this does not appear to be a major driver of transmission. However, they have another category called pre-symptomatic transmission, wherein it is possible to become infected by someone 
one to three days before they are symptomatic. But this still requires the virus to be spread via droplet and introduced into your eyes, nose, or mouth. The takeaway is this. Majority will be symptomatic transmission. However, pre-symptomatic transmission is possible. Proper physical distancing and social hygiene measures are effective ways of protecting us from the disease. So we are all being exposed to the same virus and the same strains. But in one person, that exposure will lead to the disease and to possible hospitalization. While in another person, you will have a very mild expression of disease or maybe even just a minor inconvenience. Some people may not even know that they've been infected at all. What makes the difference? It could be the baseline health status of one person versus another. Just to be clear, by baseline health, we are talking about your body's ability to mount an immune response against the virus. It could be the strength of the virus strain that you've come into contact with. We do know from studies that there are different strains and we do know that the virus can survive on different surfaces for hours or even days. But keep in mind that the longer the virus is out on these surfaces, the weaker and less problematic it becomes. Or it could be the sanitary measures or the physical distancing protocols employed or adopted by one person over another. So my focus for this video is going to be on things that we can control. Sanitary measures and physical distancing protocols and improving baseline health status with simple strategies. Things to do and things not to do do wash your hands. I know you've heard it over and over and over again, but that's because it's so important. The virus is very fragile, thankfully. It's got a very thin lipid layer membrane that is easily destroyed by simple soap. It doesn't even have to be antibacterial soap, which is more expensive. You just have to make sure that you wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds and cover all surfaces of your hand equally. If you suspect something is contaminated, you get a delivery of food, you come from the groceries, you get takeaway, wash your hands, spray the surfaces. If water and soap isn't available, you can use alcohol or alcohol gel, but you have to again cover all surfaces of your hands. This is key because once the virus gets into your body, it will mutate, replicate, and spread. Do wear a mask that covers your nose, your mouth, and your chin. We know the virus is not airborne. We know it's transmitted via droplets, which means that you have to come into close contact with someone in order to get it. Wearing a mask protects others and yourself from possibly transmitting the virus. Do stay at least six feet away from another person. Droplets are heavy and they cannot travel far. Do take your shoes off before you enter your house. It is possible for the virus to hitch a ride on the soles of your shoes. Set up a foot bath or spray the underside of your shoe with a disinfectant made out of a mixture of bleach and water. Do wear goggles, glasses, or a face shield. So if you are six feet away from another person, you're wearing goggles, glasses, or a face shield and a mask. Can you see how these simple measures can ensure a safe interaction with the outside world? You can shed your protection once you get into the sanctuary of your own home. It is important to set up your home as a sanctuary so that your mind can relax. Moving on to the do nots. Do not touch your face, particularly your eyes, nose, and mouth. Your skin is one of the largest defense barriers of the body. 
but your eyes, nose, and mouth are vulnerable. The virus can use them to gain entry into your cells. Once they are inside your cell, they use your own genetic material to start replicating. Once the viral load gets too high, then you may express symptoms and the disease process begins. Do not smoke as it increases the risk of developing a severe case of COVID-19 by almost 300%. And avoid excessive amounts of alcohol, which impairs the ability of your body to mount an innate immune response. Next week, we will be discussing natural ways of improving your baseline health. This is through sleep, exercise, diet, and supplementation. This is Doc Martin saying, every day in every way, you are getting better and better.